Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Disney's Sorcerer's Arena Epic Alliances by the OP Games. This is a two-player experience, and it can be played on teams of 2v2, and it is a tactics game. A tactics game involves you taking turns, going from opponent to yourself, opponent to yourself, moving and taking actions with characters. Each of your characters is going to have an initiative marker, it's going to have their own unique character deck, and of course, a card that illustrates what your character can and cannot do and the types of stats and cards in that player's deck. The game is going to be played over four different types of campaigns or chapters and you can play it as the easiest setting goes up to the most complex which is chapter four. And if you'd like there's also a 2v2 variant where you and a friend can go up against two of your other friends in an attempt to gather the most victory points or make your opponents run out of their deck by the time that that will ensure that the game ends in your favor. And based on the scenario you're playing, it's either going to be 12 or 20 victory points, and if you can achieve that, of course, or eliminating your player's deck, uh, you will win the game. With tons of unique Disney characters, such as Sully, the Little Mermaid, uh, Maleficent, and of course Gaston here, uh, you're going to have oodles of different combinations of cards to play, and expansions. There's going to be unique status effects, there's going to be victory, victory point tokens, and of course status effect markers, and a nice player reference to guide you throughout the game mode. As you begin, you'll choose your characters and go. It's a pretty straightforward game. Let's talk about setup, let's talk about how to play, and then of course my review. Now, setting up the game is actually fairly simple, but there are four different ways to set up the game based on how you want to play. And in this case, I'm going to kind of explain the basics of all of them put together. First thing you're going to do is choose characters. You'll choose up to either two or three based on the game mode. You'll take their decks, combine them, shuffle them up, and now you'll have your own player deck. You'll also take your initiative tokens, and based on what the game says to do, you'll place them going from blue, red, blue, red, blue, red. Blue is one team, red is the other, whether you're playing 1v1 or 2v2. And that will determine order. You'll also take a token that will symbolize who's going to get to go first. Additionally, you're going to have a player reference based on the chapters and scenarios you're playing, whether it be chapter 3 or 4, or uh, chapter 1 or chapter 2. And it'll tell you how to begin your turn and how to continue playing the game. After you've got your deck, initiative markers, and the initiative token, as well as set up your characters in one of the blue squares on either side of the board, and giving yourself either the team red or the team blue colors, as signified on the bottom bases of your characters, you'll take your character card, set it next to you along with all the tokens and all the different status effects, and you're ready to begin the game. Regardless of the chapter that you're playing in Sorcerer's Arena, you're going to be doing two main things on your turn. You'll be taking actions and uh, you'll be taking movements. Uh, to begin your turn, you'll take, take a look at the chapter reference and it'll explain what you're going to do, which is always pretty much the same thing. You'll check to see if you have any status effects and tokens on those effects. Remove one token from each effect. If there are no tokens remaining, those effects are going to be removed, whether it be cursed, flustered, shrunken, tough, taunt, strong, stealthy, or more. Then, you're going to go ahead and check to see if your character is on a VP space. It's one of those gold spaces in the middle of the board. If that character that you're activating is on a space like that, you'll take a victory point and add it to your total pool, which is how you win the game. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to check to see if your character is KO'd. So if they're KO'd, they're not on the space. They're in fact off of the board because they had been removed from the board by reducing their HP to zero from your opponents. In which case, you'll take your character and place it back on one of the blue spaces on your side of the board. Then you'll gain um, all the HP and everything that you would normally gain with that character, and of course your opponents will gain victory points when defeating them. Uh, you'll draw a card on your turn. You're going to have a hand size based on the characters that you choose. Each character is going to have a certain number of cards that you'll be getting in addition uh, to stacking them up. So when playing against or with Maleficent and Mickey, Maleficent has a hand of two and Mickey has a hand of two, making your total max hand size four. Well, in addition to those four cards at the beginning of the game, you're also going to draw a card on each of your turns and your max hand size will be the combination of those two characters. Or if you're playing the base mode, it will tell you your basic hand size. The next thing you'll do is you'll take your movement and your actions. Uh, you can take one movement on a turn and one action. There's base movement for each character and beginning movement, and depending on the scenario you're playing, usually it's going to be about two. And you're going to basically move on the board here like you would a normal tactics game. One and then two spaces. Actions are pretty simple. Usually they're going to be involving a base attack. If you're adjacent to an opponent, you'll do your base damage to them, reducing HP on their tracker. However, if you want, there's cards in the deck, and based on the color of those cards, you can take them as actions. Red ones here, or green ones. Uh, green ones are movement, so instead of moving your base amount, you can play one of these guys here. And red ones are actions. If you want to play an action as opposed to your base attack, you can play one of these cards here. 
Some cards have kind of a mix where you can choose between whether you want to make it a movement action or a action action, <laughs> in which case you can use those for either. You can only play two cards on your turn and they have to be an action and a movement. It can't be two actions or two movements. Or you can take a basic action and a basic movement. There are character abilities in the game as well that you can play between phases, during phases. It will tell you on the cards what they do and how they work. And of course there's also upgrades that you can utilize if your character has been upgraded. After you've played one of each of the different actions, or just one of them, or none of them if you just so choose, you'll discard down to your max hand size, and then you'll end your turn. And the next character in turn order, based on the initiative tracker, is going to go. And you'll have credence and repeat, going back and forth, adding status markers based on the cards, moving your characters, taking actions, drawing cards, etc., etc., up until the point where somebody reaches that total victory point count. In a shorter game or one of the earlier scenarios, it's 12, and as it progresses, it goes to 20. The base scenario, you play with two characters, and you can move to three characters, and then finally, when you're playing a 2v2, each character or player will get to choose two characters, and uh, you're going to have a two for yourself, two for your ally, and then it'll be four against you on the opposite, opposite board with two other players as well. And in fact, you could play up to three players if you'd like, but one player will control four, whereas you and your ally will only control two. And uh, that's basically the idea of the game. Defeating your opponents will grant you victory points based on how many points they are worth. So when you defeat Mickey here, he's going to grant you four victory points. Um, and of course, whenever you land and stay on a space and begin that uh, turn being on that golden space in the middle of the board, you'll score a victory point as well. Combining those two, having those points, uh, as soon as you get them, you win the game of Disney's Sorcerer's Arena Epic Alliances. It's pretty straightforward and simple. Let's talk about my review. First things first, let's talk about the artwork for the game. This artwork is themed Disney. You're playing in an arena with Disney characters. Uh, you are going to be utilizing these characters here, which are standees that have the art attached and printed to them. And they work really well, they look really nice, and you can see them, you can understand what characters they are, and you know how they're going to work. Each of your different character cards are going to have your artwork, it's going to have all your stats and abilities, and it's pretty straightforward. They have a front and a back for when you upgrade them, and all of your tokens have symbols on them, and each of your cards has unique pieces of artwork based on the character that you're playing on, and that's also going to be included in some type of uh, image or screenshot from a movie of one of those characters' choosings, or one of the characters that you have. Uh, so, for instance, if it was, uh, I don't know, uh, The Little Mermaid, Ariel is going to be associated with that movie and have all the different images of the different characters from Little Mermaid in these cards here. Uh, sometimes it'll be her or a trident or another mermaid of some sort, etc., etc. And all the artwork works really well, as long as you like those movies and the artwork from those type of movies. The artwork for the board is pretty plain, pretty straightforward. It's going to just be an arena. Uh, it looks kind of like a, you're in the cosmos, there's clouds and whatnot. It's fine. I would have preferred if it was in like Mickey's workshop uh, or if it was like, I don't know, Undersea with Ariel or maybe it's the Beast Castle. I think having a front and back with different locations would be cool. Um, but overall, the starting standard artwork for the game is, is fine. And of course, the images for all the different uh, so skills or like different status effects, they're also fine. Quality of the game. All the components, high quality pieces, the nice back and... Uh, uh, back and front type of like little miniatures here. They work fairly well. Would I have preferred miniatures for this game? Yes, because it's a tactics game. There's very few characters. Uh, I think there's a total of eight. So you could have probably fit them in the box. I'd have pr probably preferred those. But these are my second favorite. I like these much better than the wooden standees. And you can see them and they have vivid colors and imagery. So I do appreciate that. All the cards are easy to use. Mm, decent quality as well. And the tokens are nice and thick and have front and backs to them. You can see they put some time and effort and care into making sure that these tokens were very nice. And that goes uh, double for the different status effects and, of course, all the other little tokens you'll be using, like victory points and status effect tokens and the round token. Um, then you're going to have these guys here, the bases for these. Uh, first of all, some of these components do not stick in the base. For instance, this one here, it kind of pops out. So when I'm moving the character around, I've got it stuck in there. It's okay, right? If I move this, it's going to fall out. Uh, there's only one or two that did this. I think it's just a little bit of a manufacturing error, and you may or may not have this happen with your copy. I'm not going to ding it too many points for that. For the most part, they stick in rather nicely, and they're nice and tight and taut. And then you have this little health tracker. This is my least favorite part about the components of the game. It's basically a plastic piece or ring, 
based on the color of your team that you place around your character. Usually it works pretty well in games like these, but in this case it's very finicky having to move this little marker and tracker to see this little arrow that indicates how much HP this character has. I would have much preferred to just have tokens and place them on my character than have to try and keep track of them with this little marking tool here. It just doesn't work very well and it's very, very finicky. But overall quality for the game is solid. The United Box uh, has all the characters and a character for every spot and a spot for every character. It's got a nice little uh, tuck box here as well and it fits all the components you need for the game. But uh, very little room for any additional upgrades for character expansions that may be coming in the future and in fact probably are. Okay, gameplay now. In the game Sorcerer's Arena, you are playing a tactics game first and foremost. It has a little bit of a deck building concept. You're going to add decks together based on the characters that you're playing with. Each deck functions with their character in a specific way. Mickey, for an instance, is going to be agile. He's going to be a kind of support character. He utilizes magic. He allows you to draw cards. He has unique special passive effects, etc., etc. Aladdin is more of a sneaky thief. He's able to move and go around and do some bits of damage as he kind of crosses crosses the field. You have Sully, a big fat bruiser who goes around and pummels things if you're too close. You want to be far range from him because otherwise he's going to take you down very much so in line with Gaston. And both those characters have your own, their own unique abilities as well that trigger in different ways. And uh, each character's HP and stats do feel like that specific character. Uh, some characters are a little wonky. I mean you have Ariel at 8 health and Maleficent at 7. I would probably assume that Maleficent will have a little bit more HP, but I don't know, maybe not. Because <laughs> then you even have Aladdin the streetwise guy who's got nine, eh, but I'm not going to be too picky on that. They are all different and they all function differently and they're all fairly balanced as well. I never had an issue with playing balancing in any of the four chapters and in the 2v2 game. It's pretty straightforward what you need to do. What do you need to do? destroy players. You need to defeat players on the board and you need to go on to the little spaces on the board that have the little golden uh, hexagonal areas. Uh, Pentagon. Hexagon? Hexagon. <laughs> and basically your come up is going to be on these spaces here. Most times you're going to be going back and forth defeating characters and it's going to come down to this kind of king of the hill variant and how you choose to play your cards and where you kind of line up your characters. Play is kind of like a Final Fantasy tactics game. If you've ever played a Final Fantasy tactics game or any tactics game board game, uh, video game players or not, you're going to probably understand how this game works. My turn, take my move, take my action of attacking. Your turn, take your move, take your action of attacking. And in this game, it has the unique addition of the deck. My turn, I play my card that lets me move three spaces. I play my next card that has a range of three and does three damage and does damage to all adjacent units, but it's only one in my deck and it's a very powerful card. Um, and that's kind of how those work. Or maybe I'm gonna be playing a card that's going to allow me to taunt any character that's adjacent to me as opposed to hitting my own characters. Maybe Gaston's up here, Little Mermaid's on the board protecting that victory point space, and Sully comes to defeat the Little Mermaid. Well make sure that Gaston drops a taunt on Sully, in which case Sully is going to hit Gaston instead of Little Mermaid. This so is not exactly how Gaston works and whatnot. I'm just giving an example of how gameplay functions and feels with the different characters, and it does work very well with that, and all the different characters have their own unique abilities and styles and skills. Uh, this game only uh, is lackluster for the board. I really wish they would have had additional board spaces, different things that you can interact with. Uh, characters had unique cards that affected the board in some way, place certain traps down, place certain uh, other unique uh, hexagon tiles down. Uh, maybe there's an opposite side of this board here that had some type of unique field advantages, maybe additional spaces where you can kind of do king of the hill with. That kind of thing would have been nice. The board just lacks a lot of presence and it lacks a lot of interesting aspects to it. The the characters have all the theme and all the fun to them, uh, whereas the board just doesn't have much of anything. And you're just basically, this, this board could have been 8 million spaces big. It really wouldn't matter because all the, all the action is going to happen up in the front center of the board for the most part. The only time you're ever going to go back here is when you pass away and then you have to move back and deal with trying to get those spaces again. Uh, the characters and their upgrades are really excellent. You're going to have skills on your character as you progress throughout the different modes of play which give you additional HP and victory points, cards in hand, the different types of cards that will be in your deck, and how to upgrade your characters as you play cards. You can use those cards from the graveyard to flip your character over and give characters unique skills. Mickey, for instance, can discard any specific card from his deck that this says uh, to basically give uh, him a magic broom. 
which is a specific status effect that lets them basically kind of scry cards. A helping hand at the end of each player's each each phase on Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey's turn, if two or more status counters were placed on the broom, then you draw a card. So this guy's all about drawing cards, scrying cards, and whatnot. And as you upgrade them, it let you do more of that. And that functions with each character, and they all function differently. And that's basically the idea of gameplay. It's pretty straightforward. It's pretty simplistic, even at its, it's at its most advanced. But that does not mean it's not a lot of fun. This we had a lot of fun with this game. We played this multiple times over the course of uh, two days and tried out all the different variants that had to offer and all the different characters. And the girls and myself all really, really enjoyed it. Is this game going to be super in-depth and complex? No. Does it have a good amount of uh, options and choices with characters that you can attach to them and with the additional expansions coming out? Absolutely yes. And the characters all feel differently and function differently and with the decks put together, it makes for a really interesting gameplay each and every time. Overall, this is a solid tactical game. It's nothing super amazing or something super unique. It does feel kind of like a lot of other tactics games, but it does have its own unique nuances. And if you're a Disney lover, this is going to sell you because there are a ton of the coolest characters in the game, uh, or in the, from, from Disney, in this game. And I expect to see even more of them. Uh, you can be able to choose your favorite Disney characters and go head-to-head -head against each other and play with people who have never played board games before, learning the game from step one all the way to four, to playing a more advanced version, till eventually you can move on to another tactics game or more board games that are going to get people interested. This is definitely a gateway tactics game, and it does a great job of the IP. It takes a lot of care and time into the characters and overall just had a lot of fun time. Uh, I had, I had, I, in general, I had a lot of fun in my time playing. I just wish they would mess with the board a little more, but overall, it's a great game. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Sorcerer's Arena Epic Alliances by the OP Games. If you want to pick it up, there's a link down below in the description, as well as links for additional content. I believe there's at least one expansion either coming out or is currently out. And by the time you're watching this video, it likely is. All right, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you. You can check out the website, unfilteredgamer.com. There's blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. You can also go ahead and hit up the live stream every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, where you can see us play more games just like this one. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to battling it out with you in the Sorcerer's Arena next time.